Well, I think now is a good time to say that my journey with a DC Extended Universe has ended on a pretty decent good note. Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. everyone, Lucamus Prime here, so it's time for another review of the DC Extended Universe of reviews I'm doing, and this will be the last one I'm ever going to watch, guys, in the history of the movies they're doing, and this film, of course, which I saw today, as you see by the title and the thumbnail, is of course none other than 2023's Shazam! Fury of the Gods, and this is of course the sequel to the 29 movie, 19 movie Shazam, so... So you, got, you guys will, will recall that I absolutely love the first Shazam movie. It's one of my favourites in the DC Extended Universe of all time. Just an absolutely amazing movie. And it definitely deserved this sequel, which is why I gave it a watch. Because, as you guys may know, due to the DC Universe now being rebooted, and also due to, of course, Henry Cavill, who plays Superman, of course, being, being booted out of the DCU, despite returning in Black Adam, that made me completely lose interest in the DC Universe and... This, this was going to be my last film I'll be seeing in the DC Universe's live-action movies in the extended universe, of course. So, how was this movie made, guys? So, so, so following the success of the first movie, a sequel began in development, and, and with Henry Gader and returning as writer, and also oh, um, David F. Sandberg and Zachary Levi, who played Shazam, also set to return as well. Oh, oh. And... The rest of the cast was also confirmed in August 2020, alongside the title of Fury and the Gods. And, of course, the, the villains were formed of a daughter of, of Atlas, and they were revealed in early 2021. Filming began in May in Atlas, Georgia in 2021 and concluded in that August. The film, of course, premiered at the Fox Village Theatre in West Los Angeles on March 14th, so yeah, three days before today. And, of course, was, was released today, theatrically on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, so yeah. The film, of course, has received mixed reviews so far, who've praised its humour but criticised the direction. So, when it comes to my reaction to this film, guys, so, I, of course, have just seen the film today at the cinema on the day it opened, and so, before I delve into spoilers, guys, I will say that, in my opinion, this film was good. Yeah, I think it was good, but I will say decently good, but, I mean... It may not, may not have been, you know, as good in my opinion as the first movie, so I still prefer the first movie, in my opinion. So, yeah. The sequel, all that I just saw today, was still good, but personally, guys, I do prefer the first movie. So, now I'm going to delve into, into sports by talking about the plot and what I thought of the plot, guys. So, so I'm, I'm going to give it the countdown from 5 to 0. So, if you guys have not seen it, I'd recommend to see it in theaters if you want to watch it before you see this review. So, yeah, here we go. So, 5, 4, 3, 2... One zero. Okay, so now the film begins, of course, um, in Athens, um, where there's like, of course, a museum at the Acropolis, and we see, of course, two of these daughters of Atlas, which are, of course, um, Hespera and Calypso, and they they go there to steal the broken staff of of the wizard, which, of course, if you guys have seen the first movie, you, you'll be aware, of course, that Shazam broke at, at the end of the movie, and. And, of course, they take it. And then, of course, um, we then get, as well, um, a pretty funny scene where we see Shazam in, like, some sort of, like, um, psych psychiatrist room or something. There was a pretty funny scene to introduce him. And we then get to see, of course, um, him and his siblings in action as they're, they're saving people on, on a collapsing bridge. But, unfortunately, despite saving everyone, the, the bridge does collapse. And, unfortunately, the news is making out, out that um, they're being called out for destruction. And at the and family home, everyone is drifting apart due to them growing older and having personal interests. And of course, Billy is also worried about, about being kicked out of the Vasquez family because he's turning 18 and aging out of a fostering system. And then, then however, though, when it comes to, to the, the, the daughters of Atlas, guys, there's a pretty weird scene, though, where they take it to, like, a, a big, like, sort of, like, lair thing, like, a, and, um... It was very well designed, though, in my opinion, the lair, but what's weird is they have Wizard in prison, so, like, didn't he he die in this movie? So, like, and they don't even explain how he came back, because in the first movie, after Shazam got his powers from the Wizard, the Wizard crumbled to dust, died, so 
How is he back in this movie? It doesn't make any sense. So that was really confusing how, how he came back in this. It was did it didn't make sense how Wizard came back. I was really you, you know can I, I don't really like that at all really. So it doesn't make sense how Wizard came back. I mean it didn't explain how he came back either. So Although, Jaron Hans, who still played him very well, though, in my opinion, despite, you know, not having a good, good direction, because, yeah, it didn't make sense how Wizard came back, despite dying in the first Shazam movie. Now, then after this, when he's imprisoned, he then sends out a, a message to Billy. Um, some sort of, like, message, it's like a telepathic message, and we get a scene where Billy's having, like, a dream, where he's having, like, a meal in Paris with Wonder Woman, and... Yeah, and what's weird is we don't see her face in this scene, but I'm pretty sure that was definitely Gal Gadot, of course, and I'll get to her, of course, when I'm talking about the end of the movie. And what's weird is his face appears on her, the wizard, so, like, okay, that was a bit weird, but he, of course, warns Billy about about the daughter as of Atlas, and so Billy and, and the siblings then do their research on, on the daughters, and... The siblings are still their usual like or sellers in this movie. They were very great in the first movie and they were good in this movie once again. And now, meanwhile, when it comes to Freddy, he's unfortunately bullied at school by some un unlikable bullies. And he then meets a girl, a new girl called Anne. And, and they bond together and develop a relationship. And then on the rooftop of a school, he then shows off his superhero self. But unfortunately, Hespera and Calypso arrive with the staff. And they use it on Freddy, which, which of course takes away his powers. And it's real that Anne is their youngest sister, Anthea. So, yeah, that was, a, that was a, a decent twist, but I think it could have executed a bit better, really. It came out of nowhere, really. And Billy and his siblings went around to save Freddy, but the daughter has kidnapped him. And then they put, like, a big dorm around, the city, around, around Philadelphia. So it traps the family and the city's residents in there. And then Freddy is in prison along with a wizard in in, in um, the kingdom, of course, in that big, like, lair place. And the daughter of Atlas want revenge because apparently the wizard has killed Atlas, the titan. So, the family then, of course, goes to the Rock of Eternity. And they, and it's revealed, of course, that, um, that um, the one called um, Pedro Pena, um, he has, like, a library in the Rock of Eternity. And he... And then they they enter this library and they encounter a magic pen, which he nicknames Steve. <laughs> and they use it to, to make a letter to Hespera calling for a deal for Freddy and the staff. So now, meanwhile, however, though, um, the wizard and, and Freddy, of course, do manage to um, to break out because Amphia helps them get out because because um, she, you know, uh, you know, appreciates Freddy helping her um, when she got bullied in, in, at the school. So, Billy then meets Hespera at a hamburger joint, where she admits that her father was a tyrant, and his family stole all the powers of the gods. Then, however, the family of, of, of the siblings arrive, but then so does was Hespera's siblings, and which is a Calypso, of course, and um, they fight. Unfortunately, Pedro's powers get taken, sadly, from the staff, and... Hespera is then defeated and brought to the lair after, after a fight with, with, the, with the siblings. However, though, when they're trying to devise a plan in Rock Eternity, Hespera has broken free, and in the library, she finds, of course, um, the golden apple, which is the seed of life. So it's, it's like that, you know, black apple thing, and it's got, like, you know, a black paint on it, and it's supposed to be the golden apple. At the kingdom, Freddy and the wizard try to find a way to escape the god's world with Anthea helping them, of course, and... But then, however, as they're about to reach the door to take him back to a library, Hespera walks through with the apple that she's just stolen. The wizard su suggests that he steal it, it so, they, so as it can destroy his world. And Freddy tries to steal it, but unfortunately, she, um, he falls over. And, and of course, um, his crutch also makes a noise when it knocks over something and it catches the door's attention. But he's luckily saved by Billy, who arrives uh, through the door. And... And then as they escape the kingdom, they return back to the house and they reveal, reveal to the Vasquezes that they're superheroes. And, and, um, but then it's revealed, of course, that um, in, in this um, kingdom, there's like a dragon sort of thing. Yeah, that was a pretty well-designed dragon, I'm not going to lie. Visually stunning. And Clips was chasing after him for the apple. And unfortunately, every member apart from Billy loses their powers, sadly. 
and Mary also tries to fly off with it, but she gets zapped with the staff and she falls and and Billy chooses to save her or the apple and he chooses to save her. So but Calypso unfortunately does get the apple though. And now this one I also didn't really like, guys. I also didn't like how she also then gravely wounded Hespera. So yeah, as much as I did like Hespera as a character, guys, Helen Mirren did a good job playing her. Unfortunately, I feel that she was underdeveloped in this movie, like the rest of the villains were, in my opinion. So, yeah. You know, Dame Helen Mirren and uh, Rachel Zegler as Amphia and Lucy Leo as Calypso, they did their best, but I feel that their, their direction could have been a bit better when it comes to the writing for them. So, yeah. I didn't really like how she how she mortally wounded and pretty much killed Hespera. She then plants the apple in a stadium, which then grows the tree of life, and... It unleashes these, like, you know, pretty freaky-looking creatures, which then attack the civilians of Philadelphia, and, um, the creatures look look pretty freaky, I'm not gonna lie. They kind of look like something out, out of Warcraft or something like that, really, like World of Warcraft. <laughs> and, so, after this, of course, um, so, Billy feels hopeless as he sees what's happening from the parking lot, um, and asks the wizard to take back his powers. But the wizard, however, tells him that he chose him because of his selflessness and his care for his family, knowing this might be a suicide mission. Billy turns into Shazam then to stop Calypso, and and the family is trying to help him despite, of course, having no powers. And however, though, Darla is, is able to ask Steve the Pen what the creature's weakness is, and that is unicorns. So, so we look around, and somehow they actually do find unicorns in like some destroyed building sort of thing. And Darla finds it, and she's able to bring it towards her and, and befriend it through Skittles. So, yeah, she, she actually uses sweets to befriend a unicorn. So, like, goodness me. And she even, of course, references the slogan, Touch the Rainbow. Like, goodness me. Like, I mean, this film did have humour, I will not lie. It had humour, like the first one did. So, I like how it's, it had its funny moments, because that's what made the first film so great, in my opinion, while having some dark elements as well. So... Shazam then finds Hespera, and he's able to temporarily re revive her with his lightning, and he persuades her to help him stop up Calypso. So, he makes Calypso chase him, and he stops at a tree of life in the stadium, and Hespera is able to use her magic to make the dome smaller, so it's only around the stadium. And the parents, Am and Amphi and Freddy, Freddy then watch at the, at the dome, where, where Billy is ready to fight Calypso on his own. So... He fights her with, with the staff, and it was definitely a very visually stunning fight scene, in my opinion. The CGI was very impressive. Definitely something way better than what the MCU's been trying to do these days. Huh. And yeah, the CGI was, was brilliant, in my opinion, for it, and visually stunning. And so, yeah. And he's able to, to destroy both Clips on the Dragon using the, by breaking the staff. But unfortunately, he does get mortally wounded in turn. And... This, this then causes Hespera to then, of course, finally die, and she disintegrates, and the shield, of course, also vanishes, and then so does Clipsum and, and the dragon's corpses as well. And, and, and alongside all the other creatures that came out of Tree of Life as well, and the unicorn as well. And... So, unfortunately, it looks like Billy has indeed been killed. So, yeah, that was definitely a very sad scene, in my opinion, pretty sad. And... The, Amphia brings them them back to her kingdom for Billy's funeral, and we get a sad scene with their mourning for him, and then Wizard says that he can't recharge his, his staff because there's, there's no gods left, but there is one, and that, of course, is Wonder Woman herself. So, yeah, Wonder Woman appears, guys, and Gal Gadot reprised her role. And it was definitely nice to see her, and sadly, this could be the last time we see her in the role, unfortunately, so, yeah, but... I think her scene was good, though, nonetheless, and it was nice to see her come back, and she was able to recharge the staff, and and then she used it to revive Billy, and he, he climbs out of, 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 the, of the grave, and yeah, and it was a bit weird, though, you know, the way they executed it, though, how he actually died, and then came back afterwards, so yeah, but it was nice to see Wonder Woman, though, and then after that, of course, the family then fixes their house, and Anne comes to live in their world, and so does the wizard as well, and he even, of course, like, shaves his beard and all that and long hair and, you know, wears casual or clothing and a nice suit and hat. So, yeah, he's definitely adapted well to, to, to Earth, hasn't he? Hmm. Now, I know you guys are going to be asking me, you know, what did I think of the credit scenes of this movie? Well, 
I'm going to say, guys, but because I've now retired from the DC Extended Universe, I did not stick for, around for them. You know, I didn't see the point anymore because they're not going to mean any, anything now because DC's going to get rebooted, so there's no point in me sticking around for them. But I know what happens, though, because I read about it online and, and, and saw it with my friends who saw it the night before. And you know what? Well, I'm not missing anything. So, yeah, there's no point, really, in me checking out, out the, the credit scenes, to be honest. I mean... I will get a movie on Blu-ray, so but I'll, I'll probably end up seeing them eventually, maybe, when I have it on Blu-ray, but I don't plan to anytime soon, because there's no point, really, because they're not going to mean anything due to DC being rebooted now, so, yeah. <sighs> now, so that's the movie. Now, I thought it was good, pretty decent movie, in my opinion, a nice way for me to end my journey with DCU, but I still, however, do prefer the first movie of, of Shazam, though. That's my opinion, so... And the reason why is because... So... So I've already said they didn't make any sense how the wizard came back alive and all, despite having died in the first movie. And, and they didn't even explain how he came back, considering he, he crumbled to dust in the first movie. It was very confusing. And also as well, um, I think the villains need a bit better developments as well as characters too, to be honest. I mean, the three actors did, did their best as them, but I think they need a better development in my opinion. And, and yeah, so that's my opinion when it comes to this movie. It was decent in my opinion, but and the ending may have, could have been a bit better executed how Billy actually died and then came back afterwards, really. So, yeah. So, nonetheless, though, this was still, in my opinion, a good movie, but not better than the first one for me, personally. So, but still a nice way for me to close my journey. And the cast did a great job, as always. You know, Zachary Levi, of course, is a perfect casting of Shazam for me. Always will be a perfect casting, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And... And the rest of the cast did a great job too, as well. Like Jack Dylan Gray's as Freddy, and of course, um, um, the others too in this movie as well. I think they all, all play their parts really well. And yeah, so anyway, guys, so uh, this is me doing my, my review for Shazam Fury of, of the Gods, the most recent DC Extended Universe movie, and the last one I'm going to watch because I'm going to be retired now from now on because I don't see up the point in continuing with the DC without Henry Cavill. So yeah, so. If I was to give this movie a score out of 10, because compared to the first one, which I give a, a solid score of a, a 4 ball and 10 out of 10, I'd probably give this movie a decent score of probably 7.5 out of 10 for me, really. So, yeah. It was still a good movie, in my opinion. And, but, you know, because of that, those bad qualities that I, I mentioned, it wasn't that good or compared to the first film for me, really. And maybe as well some of the actors who play the child forms of, of a character like Billy, they also deserve a bit more screen time as well. But yeah, Freddy probably had the biggest role when it comes to appearing in his child form, though, or, or to be honest. I think he had the biggest role in the film when it comes to being a child or compared to other actors in their child forms. But I, but I do like how they gave more screen time to the adult forms, though, which was nice to see. Especially, of course, for Sh Shazam as well. Yeah, and for the others too. So yeah. Um... So, guys, this is me doing my, my review for Shazam Fury of the Gods. So, my, my journey with DC has been fun, watching great films, but it's now time for, for me to draw it to a close. So, yeah. And it's been fun, and I'll only rewatch the older movies that I have, and but I'm not going to be watching anything else, to be honest. So, yeah, my journey is done. Um, So, you know, drill, guys. Be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments what, what you guys think of Shazam for you, regards. If you saw it, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. We'll see, we'll see what you guys think of it. Also, be sure to join Team Prime by pressing subscribe. We just come in the future. If you would like to be a member, you can respond using a piece of that or you can all description. And I'll see you all later.